Hi, Warren. Thank you so much, Mr. Bajat. There was a speculation that you and Justin conspired to be the first to break the news on the incident because of how little because of how little views it had. Well, that's just not true at all. I knew nothing of this woman. I was sitting here live, and I got a link sent to me on Twitter. I knew nothing of this. It's not my tea to share. It's not our tea to share. Look at us, we're young, but we know how to shut our faces. <laughs> Nobody heard it from us, what? Right. Say, yeah. and what do they say? What do they say? Enemy of my enemy? Learn that lesson He's my as friend. well. The following is my opinion. Unless specifically stated, it is not a defense or endorsement of any specific creator. As our subject is largely at odds with many other creators, I have done my best to obtain the most neutral sources available. We may not agree with all the people cited, but I believe they have presented their cases as accurately as possible. Please do not use this video to harass, demean, or otherwise bring hatred against any person referenced. In order to understand Goro World, you have to know its cast of characters. Although comprised of different players, its two main stars are Amberlyn Reed and Foodie Beauty, two channels that started as weight loss journeys but took drastic detours on the road to progress. And while many feel Amberlyn Reed has become somewhat boring and repetitive, its alternate star, Foodie, has taken many questionable turns. And while the stars are often the heroes, in our stories they are the antagonists, and the heroes come in the form of reactors and creators who detail their feelings towards our two main characters. But as fallible humans, these heroes can sometimes fall prey to their own shortcomings, blurring the line between subject and observer. Today's subject is French fried girl, an extremely popular figure in the community. While many love her, there are those who question her role, and the degrees of separation that seem to grow increasingly closer to foodie beauty as time goes on. In 2020, events would happen that would forever change the course of our world and history itself. As YouTube is adverse to talking about this occurrence, I will refer to it as the event, and hopefully you know which one I mean. Largely confined to our homes, separated from friends, and in some cases family, People sought refuge in other forms of media and friendship, with YouTube emerging as a frequent shelter for those seeking entertainment. Soon, this entertainment would be partnered with companionship, as live streaming was becoming increasingly popular, along with its accompanying chats that allowed you to converse with creators and other viewers. In her own part of the world, Foodie Beauty would be recovering from other life events, including her recent hysterectomy and breakup from her longtime boyfriend BB. This breakup would cause her to move out of their apartment, and into a new one they called the villa, where she would become roommates with her best friend Pete's. Foodie, who was already known for her less than dainty videos and frequent indiscretions. I clogged the toilet. It wouldn't flush. It, it overflowed. So everything went everywhere. And he clean, he had to clean it up. Would find a new outlet in live streams, where her every thought and move would be vividly displayed in real time, unedited, and often at the risk of her better judgment, which at the time seemed to be non existent. At the creation of her live streams came the VIBs, very important Beezers, the name Foodie had chosen for her frequent fans and viewers, as she referred to her shenanigans as Beezing. 
the unrelenting support of her followers, along with their own questionable judgment towards Foodie, led many to call this group of chatters the hug box, a term that would go on to represent fan bases in general. To meet the demand of these live streams, a new genre of creator slash reactor would emerge called stream snipers, a term used to describe a person doing a live to react concurrently with another creator's live stream. Although the name originated in gaming, it would be adopted to accommodate this new genre of reaction content. One of the reactors to emerge was French Fried Goral, a creator who formerly chronicled her weight loss journey and actually admired foodie beauty. And most notably had been blocked by her as well. Why am I here? Uh, I've been watching Foodie Beauty and Amberlynn Reed work them um, on YouTube since about 2017. Um, like so many other people, I found them while wanting to start my own weight loss and looking for motivation online. Um, I'd say it took me about four to five complete cycles for me to realize that they weren't sincere weight loss channels, but they were hustlers. It is important to note that live streams were not inherently new, but increased during the event. Long before French Fried Goral and stories from the internet, aka Monty, YouTube Underground had built her own loyal fanbase with live streams watching edited video from Foodie Beauty. Ironically, Yaba would also be one of the most outspoken critics concerning involving oneself in the life of other creators, as we will elaborate on shortly. French Fried Goral would try and distinguish herself from Hater Nation, a well-known incredibly problematic community comprised of adults hurling insults, allegations, and IRL interactions that go beyond the realm of civilized YouTube behavior. Rife with lawsuits, doxing, and battles that subvert the expectations of even the most drama-prone members of the community. Although FFG would try and set herself apart, Early video indicates she did dabble in the drama for a period of time, as evidenced in now-deleted response videos. To another episode of Drinks and Discussions, a series where we sit down, have a drink, and have a discussion. So the aunties are super, super bothered since my previous video. It seems like they're okay with putting everybody else's dirt out there, but they really don't like to have their shit thrown in their faces. Now, Peanut came on live stream for two hours in a live stream entitled, Here's Your Proof, You Are Pathetic, and I Feel Sorry For You. So today, we're going to take a look at that video and discuss. Come on, wake the fuck up. If you believe this shit, it's time to wake the fuck up. Tiny little man. Ugh. As I said, my job is unfuckwithable. Because you don't have one, I bet. Is this projection on her part? Is this why she's always talking about other people's jobs? Oh, honey, honey, I have a job. I have a job. I know this is a foreign concept to you guys, but most people work. It's it's nothing special to the general population, but to your group of fucking halfwits, it's like ha winning the lottery or something. It's like having a superpower having a job. It's just what normal people fucking do every day, Peanut. Nothing special about it. However, FFG would find her calling in Foodie Beauty, where two separate women in the same part of the world would seize the opportunity of world events to build their platforms and respective followings, their fates forever aligned and at equal odds. The former fan would become the avid hater under the guise of her concern for her former inspiration, offering a unique perspective through the eyes of somebody close to the scene and close to the subject herself, Chantal. FFG's way in would be through the way of Nader, Foodie's new romantic interest and the subject of many gushing live streams. Although apparently in love, or at least lust, Foodie's best friend Shannon would attempt to intervene when Nader's apparent less than redeeming qualities would surface. When these attempts were lost on Foodie, Shannon would align herself with French Fried Goral, with FFG pleading with Foodie's members to unblock her, as she was now denied entry to her former favorite's life. Claiming inside knowledge of Nader, her guided expertise could somehow serve as the doorway to healing. Of course, we all know how this went, Foodie would remain in denial, the two would break up, with Foodie going on a now near two-year rage-filled quest to explain her love and disdain for a man that now serves raw chicken for dinner. This would also ignite a fight between Shannon and Foodie. 
The two would eventually mend, but signs of trouble would again surface later. It is important to understand, and I think we all do, that foodie beauty is impervious to advice and concerns from outside parties that are unwilling to tell her anything but what she wants to hear. FFG's intervention would do little to distract Foodie from her interest, and some may argue, only strengthened her resolve to seek out a bond with a person who was now garnering her views, and consequently bolstering an audience for not one, but two platforms, FFG's and Chantal's. It would also serve to open the door to further real-life interactions, where the line between creator and viewer would consistently weaken, making it easier to cross boundaries that were already in danger of weakening due to the effects of parasocial relationships and need for involvement. There's actually a bunch of people now that decided to go IRL and pro tip until they hear an actual audible moo and probably get kicked in the face. They decided to message him on Facebook and after May came out with their story, some of them had a whole woe is me moment where they actually said that, oh, they're afraid that something bad is going to happen because this guy has called them on Messenger. Like, bitch. Oh my God, these people. How many people from our chat actually, when Nader became a public figure in our community, how many of you added him on Messenger, on Facebook? Put a one in the chat. If you added Nader, <laughs> send him a friend request on Messenger or whatever, however that happens, put a one in the chat just for, just, just out of curiosity. I'll wait. Wow. There's a few ones. <laughs> I'm never going to be able to do this. Look, I'll just tell you because um, there's no way I can go back and find all the ones. If you're one, you can see the door. You can leave. Don't come back. Maj, if you see a one, you're more than welcome to block it. I don't want any of the ones in my chat. That's just what it is. Get rid of the ones. If you see a one, block it. And then... To top it off, because, you know, why not? We're, we're in for a penny, in for a pound at this point. FFG decided that this is not her cow tipping. Oh, no, 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 no. She had no involvement. She will never treat a story as serious as this, just as tea. And that is for law enforcement to figure out. Please take care of your mental health. Absolutely. That's why I'm backing off. Like, this isn't fucking tea anymore. I mean, I'm not in law enforcement. I'm not said. She is throwing her best friend just saying under the bus because why not? Why not? You know, why not? This is this is this is not a me problem. This is a, a we problem, right? The whole community has gone too far. This section is going to cover some extremely serious topics. I would like to give you fair warning. I have done my best to document these events as fairly as possible. As this is a difficult subject, you may wish to skip if it causes distress. In late 2021, a viewer would come forward to allege they had been essayed by Nader Elshami, the former boyfriend of Foodie Beauty and content creator, after they traveled to meet him in person after interacting on his channel. For reasons unclear, this viewer would allegedly approach a channel called Just Sayin, a Foodie Beauty archive channel and at the time, frequent collaborator with French Fried Goral. Citing they had a quote, exclusive, Just Sayin would make a now-deleted video, citing May Anderson's story. For obvious reasons, Just Sayin would remove the video, removing it from their channel. But not before being documented by Troll Detective, who was assigned credit for archiving the audio. While I will not play the audio, it is available on their channel. In a video dated October 22, 21, shortly before May's allegations would surface, just Sayin and French Fried Goral would do a live stream together, where French Fried Goral would coyly and playfully state they had tea. This video would surface two days before May Anderson would come forward. Just Sayin would reluctantly state it was not their tea to serve, with FFG cheerfully and reluctantly backing off, concealing her disappointment with giggles and smiles. Many have cited this interaction as evidence that French Fried Goral was aware of the charges and was treating it as tea as May Anderson's story would be told shortly thereafter. FFG has adamantly declared this is untrue, and would later go on to deny any involvement, citing Just Sayin as the reason for the discourse and effectively laying blame on Just Sayin alone. 
Later she would cite their lack of chemistry as the reasons they no longer collaborate, however, Just Sayin's other channel featured several vlogs showing the two had met in person and apparently had a strengthened bond. Before their bond was broken, a tweet would surface from French fried Goral, claiming that Just Sayin had the quote exclusive. Just Sayin would make a public declaration that she was the one who was responsible for this supposedly breaking story, and effectively take the blame for her former friend and collaborator. This is tea. This is tea. But let's wait. It's not it. my tea to share. Is it? It's not our tea to share. Ooh. Look at us. We're yentas, yeah. but we know how to shut our faces. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody heard it from us. What? <laughs> when friend my girl's such a fucking liar. No. Hey, does, does Leona Loca. I love you too. Meow, meow, meow. <laughs> hmm. All right. Not peel it, spill it. <laughs> Share. I'm so I'll... fucking curious to see Madsy's video. I yeah, need to please. No. Go. Can we just? I don't know what he. Yes, did. you can. He's not gonna be mad. Madsy's okay. Good. good. It's it's Madsy. a short one. It's only a few minutes. I just didn't want to like. Okay, he takes. Do I say anything to him? No. Right. Okay. You can't share five few minutes. I'm sure he I'm doesn't just saying, care. I've never ever spoken to the guy. It's like hi <laughs> for the first He's time. He's not I'm gonna <laughs> You're not stealing his content. That's I, I could single hand it. Never mind. Just, just shoosh. Let's just hear. I'm dying to know how he got his hands on this to see. Is it what we know? Many cited her inference to T and what we know as an indicator a larger scenario was happening. The video they watched did not pertain to the charges and is still available on her channel to view. FFG would claim she knew nothing of May but Discord screenshots have been provided to indicate that she was at least in the same server, as well as the aforementioned tweet. May's story would become public October 24, 2022, two days after the livestream between Just Sayin and FFG. Creator Charlie Gold would be one of the most outspoken on this incident, claiming that both had prior knowledge and were using it for entertainment and gossip purposes, along with trying to implicate Charlie as being complicit in their story. The ramifications of this incident have been well documented and speak to a larger issue in our community concerning real-life interactions between creators and viewers, where lines were already blurred if not obliviated. While questions remain as to why May chose this medium to tell her story, it should be noted that she did pursue criminal charges and the court battles wage to this day. Nader's last appearance in court was Wednesday, March 22, 2023, where his hearing would be further pushed back to May, 2023. Like I had texts or whatever. So if anybody wants to ever say that I'm lying or whatever, I am telling the truth. I am 1000% telling you the truth. I have never lied to you on my channel. Um, they tried to have Charlie like, I guess cover for them or maybe co-sign for them. And Charlie did decline and say, no, I'm not, I don't agree with this. Da, da, da. But unfortunately that's also when Frenchie kind of like flipped. And so that she doesn't support anybody, she doesn't, you know, fuck with the haters, da 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 And that's fine, to each his own, but I peeped that. So, Charlie showed me this screenshot of Frenchie's server, and as you guys can see, May was in that server. Uh, Frenchie and Justin were in contact with May before May's video dropped, and they were interested in dropping that story first, but I think that they were trying to, I guess, help May first. But the thing about it is, if what May is alleging is true, then this can open up a can of worms and a lot of problems for a lot of people, especially um, legal repercussions. And I think that there is some recklessness there that a lot of people aren't thinking about. And that doesn't make any damn sense to be that goddamn reckless, to be honest. Um, they were in contact with May, they were talking, which is why Just Saiyan's tweets from the night of October 23rd into the morning of the 24th, as you guys can see, um, read like how they did. Just Saiyan was up all night, you know, talking about, oh, I'm gonna need my two Red Bulls for this, because Just Saiyan was working on that story. Just like how Just Saiyan was like very, very fast to drop the video recapping May's story, because Just Saiyan was already working on that. They already had the footage. Because remember, May's story dropped on the 24th of October, and everything played out like how it did. And then 
what I think is really crazy is when Bun called it out, it was pretty much swept under the rug, even though other creators knew about this. And if you want to drag me and, and, and whatever else, you can, because I was waiting to see what Charlie was going to do, especially because Charlie was way more involved than me. I was gonna, I was like, okay, do we pipe up about this? Because once again, I said I had her back. You all know, never again. The only person's interest I have is mine. I cannot have the back of many people. And this is a part of the reason why, because you end up being complicit in things that you really aren't complicit in. And I know I have a horrible pattern of learning shit the hard way, but it's just the facts. Um, I was waiting on Charlie to see what she was gonna do. I'm like, okay, are you gonna call this out or are you waiting? And Charlie's like, oh, there's so many other creators that know and this is gonna come out and da da da, and this is shicey and this is gross, da da da. Okay, cool. Time passes. Then we see the long ass tweet, the long ass community tab post from just saying, apologizing, saying, hey, you know, I'm the one that did this, da da da. But Frenchie was right there too, and Frenchie essentially did throw just saying under the bus, just saying took that heat for Frenchie. I guess that's how their friendship goes. I guess that's what their, their tea is together. Or maybe that's something that they agreed upon. I don't know. I just know that when I saw that, I was asking Charlie, I'm like, okay, are we going to say anything yet? Because that's also wrong. You know, if it's two people who are involved in something, just like how I'm holding myself accountable right now saying, hey, I'm sorry, I was also complicit when this was, you know, the talk behind the whole community, whatever, um, by trying to wait on Charlie to see what she was going to do. Because of course, you know, there's been times where Charlie gets heat, I'll take the heat for, I guess, similar to Justine and Frenchie and it's bullshit. It's bullshit. It's not right. It's not fair. It, it, it's gross, to be honest. And it's, it's fucking mob mentality. And it's fucking elementary school shit. And it's not cool. It's not Many creators began to distance themselves from each other, with each pointing the finger at the other, many fearing they appeared complicit in the incident that was being treated like tea when it was an actual real-life horror playing out on YouTube for the purpose of guilty pleasures and hate-watching. Just saying, deleted the tweet where she admitted that she was the one who was first contacted by May. That is very strange and very shady. Well, now we know it was because her and FFG decided to point the finger at Charlie. How? Like, why would they even think that they could do that? Are they ridiculous? I love. I also love how they always have these epiphanies after the fact. I always thought it was weird, and yet you didn't say fucking shit the whole time. Interesting, saying, but now, but now you always day. thought it was weird. It's a crazy day when I end up being on Charlie's side. It has happened a few times, but I'm honest. So if she's in the I'm right, not, I'm going to say she's in the right. And it seems not, like Charlie is in the right in this particular situation. I'm not on her side. She can go fuck herself. But at the end of the day, I don't believe she said FFG up. That's stupid. It's stupid. Know. Anybody who believes that, anybody who believes that needs to get their head checked. Look at what it doesn't even make any sense. Fucking... FFG would state the falling out with Just Saiyan would be because Just Saiyan had shown a picture of FFG's ex-boyfriend whom FFG claims was abusive. This picture would trigger certain traumatic memories. While I remain extremely sympathetic, it's important to note that FFG's career was catapulted after she capitalized on an abusive relationship and extended events for dramatic purposes, amplifying what many believe is a very dangerous man while receiving super chats discussing his behavior. And some maintain this involvement further influenced others to engage setting a dangerous precedent, none of which has been for the greater good, but to the greater detriment of the community. And while Foodie and Alchemy are ultimately to blame for these actions, many question if it would have escalated to such extents if not for the continuous exposure and personal involvement of FFG, who did little to de-escalate the situation. When all was said and done, May's name would be fully doxxed, and additional members of her family would be notified. Nader Elshami would go on to have two fully monetized channels and remain free, for now, from any immediate consequences. In late 2022, Foodie Beauty would famously walk in a fashion show, where FFG would make an appearance. Much to the delight of fans, but to the bewilderment of some creators, who would question why their perceived pleasant interaction belied their constant turbulent relationship. Many would cite that this was an extreme form of cow tipping, while others believed it was an FFG's right to attend a public event and comment. By this point in the timeline, FFG had famously interjected in Foodie's life, as evidenced by her involvements concerning Nader, Shannon, and by proxy, May. 
it really should not have come to a shock to any of us that it was in her realm of comfort to attend, and even pose pleasantly with Pete's and Foodie. As a result of the notoriety, the company declined any further comment and deleted all traces of the show, with many stating this was their deserved justice for including a person they did not adequately research. An author who was promoting a book about inclusivity and tolerance would also withdraw her involvement, as her good intentions would be permanently damaged due to her participation. Many people would leave comments for the company, citing their bad judgment as reasons for their outspoken antics. In February of 2023, FFG would do a live stream where she allegedly showed a picture of Foodie Beauty's mother's house, claiming to have obtained the picture from Google Maps. Many were delighted to find this, as Chantal's treatment of her cats had fueled excited outrage, with many believing Foodie Beauty's mother, the person responsible for bringing Chantal into the world, should bear heavy blame for her daughter's indiscretions. Citing outrage as justification for their furious curiosity, many would decry this as sufficient justice for her family, blatantly choosing to ignore that other family members and neighbors may adversely be affected. This would further reveal itself when a YouTuber named Goldwater Rule would visit the former neighbors of Foodie, where he would cite people leaving SPCA stickers all over Foodie's vacant apartment. It is important to note that while Chantal maintains the singular focus of fury, surrounding civilians ignorant of life outside of YouTube bear the brunt of the burden involving her antics, as their homes and apartments are within range of these antics and they must suffer unsolicited questioning and even vandalism done in the name of righteousness. Chantal has not suffered because of her indiscretions, but the people around her have. These actions mean little to nothing to Foodie Beauty, who has distanced herself by moving to another country, seemingly impervious to consequences. The same cannot be said for the people who remain in her life or have lived within her immediate area. Goldwater Rule would receive considerable backlash for this move, but it's difficult to distinguish how his actions differ from that of FFG, as both crossed into the world of reality and have ample motives and proximity to Foodie. As Thoughts and Prayers stated, the doors of engagement had previously been opened. Who the person was, uh, who the personality was on YouTube, no one had anything bad to say. Um, only one person um, had something to say. And the person actually invited me into their home. All right. The person invited me into their home to talk. And so I spent like 10 minutes um, in talking with them and um, they invited me in. So very, very interesting. And um, they were about to leave. So they invited me in. And um, let me see here. There's only observation is they had to say that the... Uh, all of the stuff that we already know is that <laughs> the person was getting tons of deliveries and um, all of the time at their door. Uh, but another interesting thing um, that they knew the person had some cats. They per knew the person had some cats. And they told me that, interestingly enough, it had been relatively quiet. However, um, however, the, um, let me see, in the last month, there had been a, like a more of a flurry of activity. And so, um, and it was a little bit, little bit busier than normal. And in the last month, there had been SPCA stickers on the door. So this is, this is in, interesting. So um, there were some SPCA stickers on the door, and which is, I guess, for the Society for the Prevention of the Cruelty to Animals. And they had noticed it. They couldn't avoid um, knowing that it was for something like that. What's interesting, though, I guess it would, it would appear that the other person in the house, none of the people were there, I guess, when the uh, SPCA came because the uh, there were stickers on the actual door, notices on the door. In February 2023, FFG would make an abrupt and now deleted post stating that direct messages from Foodie Beauty fan and creator S Jam revealed an illicit relationship between the pair where S Jam was exchanging nudes with the infamous creator. However, this would be detracted once it surfaced that in fact, the messages had nothing to do with the creator but S. Jam's ex-girlfriend, a person far removed from the drama. But the most adversely affected would come only within the last few weeks, where, after Foodie Beauty vlogged a dinner date, many people online would leave negative reviews for the restaurant they attended, potentially threatening the business and livelihood of the owners and staff alike. While FFG cannot be directly blamed for this, many hold the belief that her willingness to cross from YouTube to real life, along with her exposure to the event, 
open the door for others to comply and behave accordingly. There is a very fine line between awareness and exploitation, and for social media influencers, this boundary can sometimes be difficult to discern. As someone who is extremely close to the mental health community offline, I have bore witness to those suffering mercilessly at the hands of their minds, unable to perceive a way out or a new day. Shannon and Foodie Beauty would temporarily mend their relationship after the events of Nader. The two would eventually make up, but in mid-2022, the feud would rekindle when Foodie would not so subtly reveal that her friend was experiencing extreme mental anguish and seeking treatment. Indifferent to her friend's plight, and largely focused on herself, Foodie would claim she could not help her friend. Outraged by her actions, many would rally in Shannon's support, including FFG, who would visit Shannon and subsequently post pictures of their meeting. While many were glad to see Shannon receive the much-needed support, some people, including myself, would question the appropriateness of sharing this vulnerable time of her life online. There is a question to be asked if the adoration and support of thousands of unknown people is worth the scrutiny of exposing yourself to a broader public. And some people believed FFG should have kept this meeting to herself, as Shannon was in an extremely vulnerable state. The need to appease critics and online entertainment seekers concerned for Shannon did not warrant sharing of extremely public suffering, and the random strangers seeking this information were willing to give super chats and monetary support in exchange for this knowledge. Many have declared that FFG's efforts are not done for monetary purposes, but it is important to note that she currently has three channels that are eligible for monetization. Despite her frequent profanities, YouTube lifted the restrictions on its profanity policy in March 2023, so her motives for involving herself can be handled by the audience's discretion. The allowance of memberships and super chats are a sign of monetization, and Defy claims that despite her wishing to make more money-worthy content, she is in fact benefiting from her real-life antics. My personal belief is that the two people who had monetized channels and were not immediately suffering should not have involved their friend publicly to the further scrutiny of YouTube and events that could potentially cause further friction and damage. The reason for FFG's ever-growing popularity is due to her rescue of BBJ, Foodie Beauty's elderly cat who appeared to be suffering from neglect. Foodie Beauty, on her way back to Kuwait, would attempt to dispose of her cats, with Sam going to a new owner, and with BBJ under the constant threat of euthanization. FFG would swoop in under covert operations, when her sister-in-law came forward posed as a viewer to rescue the cat to the seeming unawareness of Foodie herself. FFG would disguise herself in the car while her brother retrieved the cat, and many breathed a heavy sigh of relief that BBJ would get the treatment they so desperately needed and deserved. This would be a highly documented and celebrated event, with full-blown hatred surfacing along with the public hashtag FootyBeautyAnimalAbuser making the rounds on Twitter and other social media. During the livestream announcing the rescue, it is speculated that FFG received up to $12,000 in super chats, money she said would be going to BBJ. She would find herself in a difficult position, as further discussion of the cats would seem like exploitation, but a lack of accountability of how super chats received would seem like she was withholding information, with people stating she should not discuss the cats while always requesting she disclose how money was spent, in what seems like a contradictory argument. Now, even with inflation factored in, and barring significant medical events, it is hard to understand how in the way of routine tests and veterinarian care the $12,000 would be needed for immediate treatment. FFG would go on to break down the costs of care and give accountability, something I credit her for, but critics maintain that this event was done for publicity and money purposes. My personal thoughts are that she actually does care about the cats, as when she had to sadly put two of her dogs to sleep, she allegedly donated more than $14,000 to the SPCA brought in by viewer donations. Whether it was moved for publicity, 
or human kindness, the motives are different to their respective holders. It would however document an additional move on FFG's behalf to insert herself into the mainframe of reality, this time hopefully for the better. One of my favorite shows is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Our protagonist's romantic interest is a vampire who is profoundly in love with her, except for the occasional times he loses his soul. During these soulless times, his intense love turns to singular hatred, inspiring a well-known quote from the show Even when he hates you, you're all he ever thinks about. Rejection is a great motivator. For the same reason Foodie has spent countless hours seething and plotting vengeance against Nader, the same sentiments ring true for FFG. Her disillusionment and ultimate rejection from one of the most disliked people on the platform has spurred a profitable career and outcome, fueled solely by her near-singular fixation, and sometimes obsession, of a person she once leaned on for inspiration. The questions remain as why we watch Foodie Beauty. For the same reasons our thoughts linger on broken relationships, feelings aligned with the past are to give a sense of purpose to something that otherwise seems purposeless. To give it meaning and believe that our initial hopes were not in vain or wasted. For some, it's the time they invested watching and believing she could change, time spent that they'll never get back or to see unrealized potential fulfilled. For others, it's the unquenchable desire to participate in her earnestly awaited downfall as witnessed by thousands, equally gathered in unison and community, to discuss their unfulfilled longings. Foodie Beauty is big business. And censored and uninhibited, her platform has free reign on YouTube, where she uses the medium to divulge her every whim, mishap, and generally bad behavior. In a bleak time in history filled with uncertainty and loneliness, the chats and streams give people a sense of belonging and togetherness, and the money donated gives sense of purpose in otherwise purposeless times. And while some claim it is for the greater good, many question the lengths people will go to in the name of perceived justice, and at what point these lengths reach their limit. Some quote guilty pleasures, others quote scholars, for their reasons of watching foodie. But whatever vices we have, emotional or intellectually motivated, it is not a recourse for vigilantism or the blatant disregard of others' boundaries. If each of us were to take on our own YouTube channel, what lengths will people go to, what limits will they exceed, to interfere in our life? Well that will depend on our enemies.